episode number 10. Man, you're going to have to start naming them because eventually... Yeah, eventually, I'm gonna, I mean, I don't even know if I can count past I think that. we're starting to hit our stride, you know? It's, yeah, yeah you know, we got a nice little format. I'm now. a little older. It takes me a minute or two to get moving, you know? I don't just yeah. jump up from the couch and sprint, you know? Well, no, if I do that, I'd probably I gotta warm up my knees. Yeah, do the ankle rotations, yeah. you know? Yeah. A couple of the things, warm warm up the blood a little bit. Speaking so. of ankle, have you ever used ankle weights? Yeah, oh yeah, man. Yeah. Dude, I remember when I was in karate... Oh, I did karate. I remember they would have us wear 10-pound ankle weights and go for runs around the, yes. as I grew up in Georgia, the strip center, strip mall center. Yep. You know, as where there was the karate studio videos. and the Dollar General and the Dollar Theater and the Eckert. Yep. And um, we'd run around with those, yeah. Well, you used Eckert, them? Uh, yeah, that's not fun. I that's just dated good. myself by saying Eckert. Eckert, yeah. So. These people don't even, they don't these even kids Eckert. Yeah. It's what Walgreens killed. So. Yep. Way right back when. And Walgreens is what Amazon killed. So <laughs> it's fun times. But did you use them? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm back in the day, of a, few, a little bit when I'm back when I was 100 pounds lighter and I played soccer. There you go. It's, it's the yeah. calf and the quad burn that yep. turns me you off. Get, oh, you get them going? Yeah. Oh, man. I remember we'd do those and then we'd have to do like hanging leg raises with them. And all that. Yeah. Well, one guy came over and smacked your stomach. So yeah, it's pretty intense. That's no, that does not sound fun. And that's how I relax. Yeah. So everyone's like, "How do you relax? Do you, do you go take a bath?" I relax two ways. I either do leg braces with ankle weights getting smacked in the stomach, yeah. or I take a bubble bath with my Riesling and my Nicholas Sparks book. One or the other. That's what you get with me? No middle just, ground. You just read the Notebook and drink some nice yes. Riesling. No, no, I'm onto the one with a Miley Cyrus. What was that one with the sea turtles? Oh, what was that one called? There's something about home. There's always a home in there. Something. We're on minute two, so we got a while. Yeah, we got to go. All right, sorry. No, 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 no keep going. Keep, oh, no. Come no. On <laughs> this episode brought to you by <laughs> Pastor Hall's wandering ability. Patrick threw something in there, and he ran with it. <laughs> All right, so we've got another controversial topic. Speaking today. of he ran with it, yeah. Yeah, we've so got another go. controversial Transition. topic. Transition. We're going to talk about pronouns today. Pronouns. And pronouns. once again, with the... Uh, the beginning of this podcast, we said we would not get political. No. This is not a political thing. No. Um, this is uh, encouraging you, our watchers, and how to deal with this. Um, because it is something that is so apparent yep. uh, in today's culture that our youth have to deal with. Uh, my wife is a teacher. She deals with this she every day. With yep. So, Pastor Hole, what if someone wants to change their pronoun? Well, and this is the... Because this happens, I mean... You have the argument usually goes into well, this is how I was raised. There was he and there was she, him mm -hmm. and her, and that's it. And now you have all this introduced into our society pretty quickly. It's not like this is 20, 30 year old debate. This yeah. is pretty I mean, young. Stuff. We're not old. No. Like we are not even really middle aged. No, no. Um, and Depending on my diet, I may be. Who knows? That's true. Um, that's true. But it's not an old. It's not like this has been. This is something of even just the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. You have the they and them. That's probably the most prominent yep. one. And they have the Z and Zer. I've even heard demon one. That's rare though. That's rare to find. But it's usually the biggest one you will have is if it's a male that he wants to go by she, yep. and if it's a female she wants to go by he. Yep. And some some sort of gender dysphoria yeah. going on or some or just or, or transitioning or something like that potentially and what it usually the arguing ground then comes to like a political thing is this is we're going to define what it means to be male what it means to yep. be female the thing is it's a deeper issue is who identifies you is it the culture that identifies you is it you yourself is it your family because mm -hmm. when you're asked tell me about yourself think of saint john the baptist he doesn't say i'm zachariah's son or elizabeth's son i'm jesus's cousin mm -hmm. i'm a nazarene nazarite right because he was a nazarite didn't cut the hair right. did all these things didn't drink wine he doesn't say any of that what does he say he identifies himself in relationship to jesus i'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness his identity is defined by christ so the biggest issue with this pronoun controversy, this pronoun confusion, is we, we really aren't focused on 
who identifies right. us. We're focusing on that being our identification rather than Christ being the one that defines us as forgiven children of the Father. So we ignore that and we dive into, even if you're opposed to the um, whichever side you fall on, I'm pro, you can be whatever pronoun you want, or I'm con, both sides are ignoring Jesus is the one that defines us all to be children of the Father. Mm -hmm. That's your identity. <clears throat> and everything from that then flows out of that identity as a forgiven child of God. And that's where we, we have the issue. Because really what, what's happening when you try to redefine yourself in pronouns? There's a lack of who am I. Yep. You're trying to seek this definition. And whenever we seek definition outside of Christ's grace, we're always going to be confused. Mm -hmm. There's never going to be any satisfaction, just despair and confusion. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, no, for sure. And I think especially living in a secular world um, and experiencing the secular world, um, it's kind of hard to find... Uh, find Christ and find him uh, him as the definition for a, a lot right. of people who struggle with this. Like they yeah. might not necessarily have ever had that or um, they've turned away from faith or something like that too. Yeah. That's, that's putting them um, towards that situation. Yeah. It's, and it's prevalent. It's not like this is just something that, okay, it's happening in big cities. This is, like you said, yeah. your wife's a teacher in Texas. I had another teacher that struggles with this, and mm -hmm. she just calls the kids by their given name. Yep. Well, I think that's the thing is, you have to ask the question, why are you seeking to be redefined? What cross or affliction do you have in your definition right now? And why are you seeking to redefine it this way? What, what, what led to this? And that takes time and effort to bear that cross with right. people. Why are you getting on this journey from, let's say, if you are a he to a she? What led to that? What caused you to go this way? And it can't just be, oh, that's... I mean, people will probably say that's just how I feel or that's who I am. Mm -hmm. Well, why, why? Just explain that to me. Don't ask it in a cruel way. Yeah. Like and, and, you owe me something, yeah. but more, I care. And, and I yeah, just People know. have to be willing to listen to that, too. Exactly. I just want to know, what led to this? And it takes patience. That's the key thing with this whole thing is just patience. Mm -hmm. You're not going to, okay, I'm going to have one argument with you and it's over. I win. It's not about winning. It's not about being right. Yep. Jesus died that you may be in a relationship with the Father. And now he has cast you back into this life to be in a relationship with everyone brought into your life. So that means you're patient with them in the same way your Father in heaven is patient with you. Yep. And I mean, and th this goes back to the conversation we had last week about pro-life and, and the pro-life movement. Um, I made it out of D.C., as you can see. Uh, I am here in one piece. One piece. Um, one beautiful but, piece. But being able to have a conversation with someone yeah, um, without drawing the political lines and actually learning from each other. Right. Um, because ultimately, um, as I experienced last week, uh, those conversations aren't necessarily best had when it's two sides warring against each other who refuse no. to listen. No. Well, and that's the thing is actually see the person as someone who's struggling with something. Yep. Always assume that they're struggling because you are struggling. We have sin. We have death. We have the old Adam. We have all these things, the devil himself, causing the struggle. And this is the other thing. Let's say you're fine with your pronouns. He, him. Why is that now the big definition for you? My definition is that I am male. My definition is I am female. Mm -hmm. And that is the most important thing. No, the most important thing is who you are in Christ. Yep, baptized child of God. That's the most important yeah. thing. And then everything else flows from that. So that's the other problem is you can't go too far and say this is the primary thing. No, it's not. Yep. So I guess that's the other thing. What do you do then? I don't know if we're good on time. No, no, we're good. What do you do if someone says this is my pronoun? I know some people that say I refuse to call them that and I never will. And then I have others that just go along with it and it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I guess where I fall on it, I'm asking myself my own question then to answer it. I fall with I meet people where they are at that moment. I guess that's like if I meet someone who I know is male but wants to be called her, mm -hmm. it's a struggle. But I say, you know what? I know what your definition is. I know who you are, but I'm not going to come down with thunderbolts on you right away. Right. Where, at what point does that necessarily help? 
if yeah. you just come down with thunderbolts right away. You come out right away. Yeah. God has placed me in your life to bear this cross with you and walk through this this confusion with you. Yep. And I'm going to bear it. Yep. Look at how Christ is patient with us. We commit the same sins over and over and over again every week. It's easy for me to stand and just condemn people. Now, the thing is, you do eventually have to address it that this is the truth. Yep. God is the one that defines it. So you don't just keep going with it. Yeah, either. just because you acknowledge it doesn't mean that you're just going to exist in that forever. Right. Right. You're not going to move on and never acknowledge what's going right. on. Right. Right. You, you, ultimately, you do have to work at building a relationship with with people and yeah. coexisting in, in that right. sort of thing. So that that's the thing. That's at least the approach I've taken is I, I don't start with the condemning thing. Let's have a, a worldview conversation of how we understand gender. Mm -hmm. It's where are you mm -hmm. at? Well, I mean, ultimately, and that would be the la first and last conversation. Yeah. Like you would have with that yeah. person. So my thing is God put me in your life for a reason. So I'm going to bear this cross, walk through with you pray for you yep. and go with it so difficult and if you're struggling like we have any youth watching and you're struggling with who am i i have these feelings talk to your pastor about it yep don't be afraid to go talk to him he's not going to condemn you outright if you walk in and say pastor i i feel these things and i experience them the f longer you wait to go talk to him about it the worse that conversation is going to be for both of you yep because it is pure reactionary instead yep. Have the conversations now while you're going through that Yep, and experience. receive comfort and forgiveness now yeah. rather than dealing with it for a long period of time. Right. So invite other people into it because guess what? There's someone always talking to you. The devil's always talking to you. The world's always talking. Yep. Don't act like, okay, just because I'm not saying it, I'm the only one experiencing it. No. There's a whole host of things happening. Demonic forces, worldly forces, our own old Adam always active in preaching to us. God gives you your pastor to bear this cross with you. Yep. There's no difference between any other struggle you'd have. So, there we it's go. fun times. That was good. It's fun time. I thought it was. All right. You're yeah. pretty good. You're pretty good. All right, guys. That is episode number 10. We'll be back next week. I think I have a good idea of something to talk about next week. So, we'll hit that. Check out our website, higherthings.org. Uh, introduce your congregation, your pastors, to our newest Vacation Bible School Diving into the Ten Commandments. It's available now. Uh, I formatted it. I think it looks beautiful. It uh, is very pretty. It is. I, I try. Check it out. Uh, we'll see you next week. Adios.